might have been read in February. There was snow on the ground because I remember listening to the audiobook while shoveling snow. So it was anywhere from November of last year to like March of this year because Canada has crazy weather. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my October TBR for 2022. If you are new to this channel then you don't know this. But my mom always picks my TBR and she always has a fun little theme that goes along with the book she chose. So this month's theme is very October if you ask me and it's how to kill a person. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that started this whole theme for her was All of Our Demise by Amanda Foodie and Kristen Lynn Herman. This is the second book to All of Us Villains, which I believe is just a duology, so the final book in that series, which I absolutely loved the first one. The first book basically follows a tournament that the rich families send one person to represent them into this tournament and it's basically a fight to the death to determine who will gain all the power for the town. Can't really tell you how it ends because that's a spoiler but I think I gave the first book 4.5 out of 5 stars like I really enjoyed it so I'm definitely intrigued to see where this book goes because we were left on a little bit of a cliffhanger. The next book that she chose was The Arsonist by Stephanie Oakes and this is because you could actually accidentally burn the house down, killing everybody inside. This one follows two teenagers who are paired to write like an essay and they write about another teenager from long ago who died. Her name was Ava and she was a resistance fighter in East Germany. Basically, these two other teenagers in present time have to figure out if she was murdered and who murdered her. I'm assuming it's gonna have something to do with a fire, an arsonist. I don't know. I've literally never heard anybody talk about this book, but I do think that the cover and the back cover is so gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The text is also like pretty big, so I feel like even though it's a bit of a chonker of a book, I should be able to get through it pretty quickly. The next book she chose was Fairyman by Claire McFall. This is because somebody could have accidentally fallen overboard. Clearly, a lot of these murders are by accident. This follows a girl named Dylan who gets into a train crash and when she awakes, she realizes she's dead and there is a fairyman named Tristan who is tasked with bringing her soul over to the next life and that's when things get a little bit interesting because they got a little bit of chemistry together and I'm assuming they're gonna fall in love. I am definitely intrigued with this and it's a pretty short book so I feel like I could get through it pretty quickly. The writing is also pretty big. Like this book is 308 pages. That's pretty small. The next book she chose was The Ex-Hex by Aaron Sterling. This is because with hexes, that's endless possibilities, you know? You can murder people a lot of ways with a hex, so. This one I don't know too much about. I think that it's like the perfect October read though, but I do know that Aaron Sterling is actually Rachel Hawkins, who I typically enjoy her writing, so I am definitely intrigued. I believe it's about a witch named Vivian who casts a curse on her ex. He returns to their hometown and then things start getting weird because he has this hex on him. But they have an undeniable chemistry so obviously they're gonna fall back in love. But yeah, that's really all I know. But like I said, I think it's like the perfect October read and it's definitely like a cleansing read for all of the thrillers that I will most likely be reading in October. So next up she actually chose The Rose and the Dagger but that's the second book in a series so I went ahead and I picked The Warrior Heir because I was trying to find another book with dagger or sword or something like that in the title and I couldn't find one so I just went with a sword on the cover and we're gonna say that that's close enough. And she chose this because of the Chicago song Cell Block Tango where the one line is he ran into my knife, he ran into my knife ten times. If you know, you know. But this one is about a boy who discovers that he is actually a warrior in some, like, far-off land. They have a tournament where each ruling kingdom, there's two of them, White Rose and Red Rose, they put somebody forward to fight for them to determine who the ruler will be. And he ends up being one of the last remaining warriors that is able to fight in this battle. And, you know, they're looking for a new champion, so it just might be him. This book was released in 2006. So it is very old, but it has been on my shelf forever. I have the entire series, so maybe if I enjoy the first one, I can just binge through the whole thing. We'll have to see if I actually pick it up this month, but I do know I have it on audio at the library, so this one might actually be done. 
The next one that she chose was actually A Poison So Dark and Drowning, but that's the second book in a series, so I got rid of that one and I put in The Poison Heart by Callan Brayron. It, it has poison in the title. Her whole reasoning for this one was that it's a two for one, you know, poisoning and drowning, but I couldn't find one with both again, so you're just getting this poison heart, okay? I'm sorry. But this one is by the author of Cinderella's Dead, which I read last December, I believe, and I actually really enjoyed it. It might have been read in February. There was snow on the ground because I remember listening to the audiobook while shoveling snow, so it was anywhere from November of last year to, like, March of this year because Canada has crazy weather. I don't really know too much about this other than that it's about a girl named Brie who inherits a big house from her aunt who dies or her grandmother or something like that a relative. And she discovers that she is very good at making these potions and apothecary shit. I'm assuming she's a witch, okay? But then she learns that there's a lot more to the inheritance than she believed, and it's like the story of that. I've heard good things. The second book recently came out, which I have an e-arc of, so I really do need to read this arc because it came out July 2021 and I still have not read it, so shame on me. Next up, she chose Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This is because it could really be anything. She slipped in the shower, she drowned in the bathtub, she fell through the ice, you know? Into the water! This one follows a single mother who turns up at the bottom of a river and then a vulnerable teenage girl has the same fate. And then the mom's 15-year-old daughter is left alone. She finds herself in the care of her mother's sister who is pretty much a stranger. The sister has said she would never return home but now she's back so I'm assuming shit's gonna go down because whenever they swear they're never gonna come back and then they come back bad things happen. I do think that this is like the perfect October read, like I said about X-Hex, except this one is a thriller, so I can read this one and then I can pick up the X-Hex for a nice palette cleanse. The next one she chose is The Serpent King. This is by Jeff Zenter and her explanation was just snakes. Enough said. So, oh dear. This is another one don't know too much about. I do know that it follows three teenagers. They are about to finish high school and obviously the end of high school means big changes in life. I think that one of them has a crush on the other one that is leaving the small town and then the other one is a big fan of some game and he meets a girl online and I'm sure things gonna go down with that and then the other girl is the girl who's leaving because she has a big fashion vlog. So big changes in life were this is probably a coming of age story. I don't know. I don't know. And then the final book that she chose is Pushing the Limits by Katie McGarry. This is for the word push because you can push somebody off of a cliff. You can push somebody in front of a car or a bus or a train or in front of like a stampeding herd of wildebeest. You know, the, the options are limitless. But this is your typical good girl meets bad boy romance. It was very popular when it first came out. It's like a whole series. I own the whole series. So again, this is one that I can just binge, hopefully, if I enjoy the first one we'll see. All right, everybody. So those were the books that my mom chose for my TBR for October 2022. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!